Hey, how you doing guys? Welcome back to another episode of OGC. Today in this video, I want to get some more work done on the Subaru. If you remember from the last video we did on this, I was changing out the transmission fluid and we noticed some grease coming out of one of the CV boots for the uh, front axle. I'll show you in a minute some other signs and stuff you guys can look for if you notice it's going bad besides maybe some weird noises in the front end when you're turning and all that good stuff. Uh, anyway, I got a new axle right from Subaru. So we're gonna go ahead, I already got it lifted up. Go ahead and pop the wheel off and let's see if we can figure out how to uh, swap these out. Save ourselves a little bit of money. Off. All right, so one of the signs of a bad CV axle is when the grease starts to leak out, you'll start to see it. That's all grease, gear grease on my rim. Obviously, it's been bad for a minute. Let's see if we can see it from under here. This is the CV axle. It goes up into the differential. And I don't know if you'll see it or not. See the grease there on the boot? It's all wet. But also, you can feel it. There's some give in there. There shouldn't be any. So, those are some signs there. Uh, step one, I'm going to take off this bracket here and give us a little more wiggle room with our brake line. And then we'll have to pop off the axle nut. Hose bracket is a 12 millimeter. I'm just going to put this right back in so I don't lose it. Forget where it goes. All right, you're going to need a, this is, I believe, a 32, 32 mil. Goes on here. Pretty sure at this point I realized uh, it's just going to take a little more brute force to remove this axle nut. There's a slot in the end of the CV axle that this nut gets bent into once it's tightened so that it can't be removed instead of, for instance, like a cotter pin. I'm just trying to bend it out so I can, you know, remove this. You have to bend this tab back out. There's a notch in the end of the axle, and it's basically to stop it from getting loose over time. So I just took a screwdriver and my chisel and chiseled it out enough, and then it popped off. All right, next, take out the cotter pin here on the bottom of the ball joint, and then we'll pull this nut off here. So let me uh, get that out. I did buy new cotter pins just in case i bought a value pack at uh, harbor freight you know just to have extra because no doubt i'll need them Get some pliers a minute there we go all right now i'll pop this off with an impact a minute size that is it is also a 19 there we go comes right off let's see if this is 
gonna come down. It's not. Let's hammer it. All right, I'm gonna share with what I had to do here. So I had to pop this bolt off down here. Uh, it looks like a tie rod or something there because this wouldn't drop down. As soon as I got that off, I was able to use a pry bar and use the leverage from the old axle, push down. And I'll show you where. Just slide it enough so it's off. So we got it off there. If you can see that yeah right there so I just pushed down on the a-arm and slid the knuckle or the ball joint out see how it's loose now so now I should be able to push this through here Hopefully get it out. Let's see what happens. That's so guys, at this point, way. it's basically a beginning of a 24-hour battle just to get this axle that is rust-welded into this hub and going to the hardware store, going to the auto parts store, renting tools. I didn't get all of it on video, but this is by far the roadblock in this repair right here if you were to have one. So I'll show a little bit of it here and uh, go from there. This technique here with the sledgehammer, not effective, not something I'd recommend doing. You end up just mushrooming out the end of that CV axle there and it really isn't as effective as you think it would be. So I would pretty much not uh, recommend doing what I'm doing here. But at this point I was just, you know, trying different things, so. All right, so I got the boot off the back. Now I gotta somehow figure out how to push this through. So let me come up with a game plan a minute. And, uh, once we get that through, we should be home free. It's actually the next day. Um, I could not get this axle out of this hub. It is seized tight. Um, I've been on it for about an hour and a half. I think we've gotten about, I think we got some movement finally, but let me just explain what I'm doing. So I ran to AutoZone. They have a tool lender program, not uh, any type of sponsor obviously or anything for this channel, but I picked up one of these hub pullers and all I've been doing is I, I removed the caliper or the uh, caliper and the rotor for the brake, so I'm kind of right on the hub. So I don't know if you can tell, it has moved a little bit, um, but I'm just trying to heat this. The problem is it's such a heat sink that it heats, ends up heating up the center bolt too, but I'm just heating it up to about 200, 250, somewhere in there. Uh, under 300 is all the hotter I can get it. Just not great on your bearings, but at this point, I don't have any other choice. And then I'll crank this about an eighth of a turn, hammer it with a hammer. Where's my hammer at? Like this. A couple good whacks. And we'll go back in. Try to get another turn out of it. Let's see. Yep. See, we're getting a little more out of it. Hit it with PB, and I'll get my propane on it. 
And I just keep repeating this. I've been doing this for about 45 minutes. And uh, I think we're getting somewhere, but it's just going to take a while. This is uh, unbelievable how stuck this is in here. You watch other channels and they just pull it out by hand. Yeah, this, this is not, not happening. So I'll put you on time lapse here and I'll just keep at it and see what happens. Set this up like right here. Let her heat. it. I think we got it. Got it. Oh, there it is. We got it. That was the trick. Clean up this mess here before we pop out the other side. battery died. I only had the one, so it's charging. So while we're waiting, let's pull the new drive shaft out and uh, compare. Looks pretty good. I also wanted to see what we're dealing with on the differential side here. It looks like there's a ring here that probably compresses in a slot, so I'm gonna have to get in there with my pry bar against the differential, and from what I've watched, you can just give it a swift push and it will pop it out. This is the side we just took out of there. It looks a lot better, it looks good. It looks identical, so good news there. Battery charge a minute. Pop off the uh, hub puller, and I'll put that back and so I can return it and get my $35 deposit back on that. Um, and I'm going to get some anti-seize and put it on those caliper bolts. They're in pretty bad shape, but that's all I got right now. We'll do that, put the, cat, put the uh, rotor and the caliper back on, and then, because I keep dropping that, and that's really bad. So we'll do that, and then the uh, guy's going to get underneath with my pry bar down there and just try to pop the other end of that shaft out. Um, got one of my lug bolts here. It is in bad shape and I might have to just replace it. So I think I'm gonna pick one of those up, 
quickly replace that, which if you've never done one of those, I have a video. I'll put a link down below on how that's done. It's really easy. And uh, then get some brake clean, clean all this stuff up. I'm gonna try to pop out this shaft a minute, see if I can get that out of there. Oh yeah. Okay, right there. I'd take you under here, but there's really, I mean, I can barely see what I'm doing. So there's that. I feel like I need to take this plastic piece off to get to this, which looks pretty rusted on here. All right, let me, uh, there's a, that plastic piece that we had to take off to drain the uh, transmission, which looks good. I don't see any leaks from that. That's a positive, but I can't get in here, of course, without this plastic piece uh, made in Japan says right on it. I don't know what it does. Let me grab something to take that off. Looks like a 10. Well, maybe. I can't remember. What was it? You guys tell me. I can't remember the handwork. Let's see. Did I get lucky? No. This one. Haha! -ha! 12. Twelve. That might do it. Oh yeah. Honestly, if I break it, I don't really care. It's a pain in the ass. All right, let's get this in there. If I can. That was a lot easier than the hub side. I'm guessing that is because it's in the differential fluid, so it's probably lubed a little better. Let's get our light back up here so we can pull this out. Let's see what this actually looks like. There it is. All right, let's take a look at this. There we are. There's the old one out. Oil looks good in the differential. It's got the same clip pin ring in here as this one. And it seems to be the same length. I think we're golden. So I'm going to go ahead and I got to go. I'm out of brake cleaner. I'm out of van ICs. I couldn't find any. So I'm going to throw some more batteries on the uh, chargers and I'm going to head down to the auto store. Return this tool that I borrowed, which if you guys need a tool, this is the first time I've done that with them. And I'm sure the other local uh, establishments have a similar program. I didn't know about it. But if you're only going to use a tool once or twice, like something like this, something specific, I mean, you basically give them the cost of the tool up front and then you have 90 days to return it and you get all your money back. So it's perfect.
So I'm gonna go do that, return this tool, pick up a couple supplies. I'm gonna put some batteries on boil and then we'll come back and start cleaning. I wanna clean everything up under there and wipe it all down and then start reassembly and we'll see. I, God, I hope it goes a little bit easier reassembling. I know it will with the hub because it's not, you know, rust welded from being in Michigan for, you know, 10 years whatever so all right I'll be right back all right I'm back I wanted to show you guys you can see in there pretty good in the differential I don't know if it'll focus but let's go ahead and try to slide the new shaft in that side first make sure it gets secure in there and then button up that plastic underneath there before I forget and then we'll come out to this side and finish doing the rest of this stuff out here. Let's see if this will go in there. Let's see if I can do it with the caliper sitting right there. So that's not really doing what I thought it was going to do. So I'm going to head back under and see if I can get it from underneath. Come on, baby. <clears throat> well, I definitely got it started. Now it's just a matter of can a guy there it goes. Whew, I think I got it. Well, that's it, I think. Okay. I just want to go back under and double check, but I heard it kind of click. And that was it. Let's see what we got. Yeah, pretty good. Got it. Eh. It might be able to. Well, that's it right there. And while I'm under here, I'm just going to look at the other side a minute. Since I can see it, I want to see what that looks like. Compare. Oh yeah, that looks the same. No oil over here or anything yet. We got it. We're in. I'm gonna bolt up these this plastic while I'm under here. And then we'll work on the outside. I'm gonna put a little anti-seize on these threads, maybe even a little in here, just in case the next guy Tries to have to replace this, make his life a little easier. Um, pop out my one bad stud here on the wheel, wheel stud. Replace that. But I need to get this all put back together to get that out of there. So let's do that next. All right, at this point, I've gotten that CV axle far enough in the hub. It was a little bit of a bugger. I just kept working it in slowly. 
Now I just pulling out the old wheel stud that was stripped. I'm gonna replace that while we're at this point so we can move forward. Pretty simple process to make sure you get it lined up and start it by tapping it on the back and then screwing it in. These are pretty, caliper bolts are pretty bad. I'm gonna go ahead and get a wire wheel on these a minute. Trying to get this back through this hole here, but I got to bring this whole assembly up. So I'm going to throw my jack underneath and try to jack it up and see if I can slide this through for my arm here. Uh, I got to tighten up the bolts here yet. Uh, we got this started, so I want to get that tightened up, this tightened up, and then we'll tighten this down to torque spec. Got it. Good. Okay. Now we're gonna let this down. There we go. is torqued. All right, she's up. Just make sure you get a chisel and put, there's a little notch here in the end of the CV and you gotta make sure you 
notch it back in there again so it can't come loose on you. But it is rock solid in there. Everything's tightened back up. I just got to do the ball joint in the bottom here, uh, right there, and get a new cotter pin. So let me do that quick. And we'll tie, put a tire on it and we'll take it for a test drive. All right, guys, well, that was a battle royale, let me tell you. But we got it done. Um, I'm glad I was able to get it done in a weekend. A uh, little advice would be make sure you're ready. Give yourself a couple days if you haven't done it before, um, especially if you're in the northern climates with the salt on the roads in the winter and you haven't ever done it before. It hasn't been a part like this one. I fought it and fought it. And, you know, it was just patience and just, you know, perseverance basically is what this mostly comes to. So it's got to get done. So I get her done. So big sledge, little sledge, a lot of heat, and uh, anything can be accomplished. Again, appreciate you guys very much. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the little bell button. All that good stuff helps the feller. And all the other YouTube channel guys out there doing stuff like this, I always make a point. Subscribe, like, comment. It helps all of us out keep this kind of stuff going and quite honestly, keep us out of the shop and save us thousands of dollars. We'll see you next time.